All right, Jeremy, let's talk about your career and certification recommendation. Sure, so, sure. many people have become your students and some maybe not, okay? They already have their CCNA. If they move to another level, what do you think is the best certification after passing your CCNA? Okay, it can be using your book, using your Udemy courses, your YouTube video contests, etc. Because personally, CCNA is not enough. Okay, especially uh, if you're in the Asian countries where the competition is very tough. Okay, yeah, and of yeah. course, uh, CCNA is not enough because we. As individuals, we as professionals, we want to have a better career and higher salary. What is the best track and certification after CCNA? Okay, so yeah, that is a very common question um, and a very good question um, because as you said, in many cases, just having the CCNA is not enough. Um, it might get you your entry level, you know, first job in IT, but it might not. And if you want to move beyond the entry level job, you'll definitely need more knowledge, more certifications. So as for the next step, it really depends on which direction you want to go in. So first, I'll just assume you want to be a network engineer, like you want to follow my path. So after the CCNA, the next best step is definitely the CCNP enterprise. I feel that it's a very natural continuation, like in the CCNA, you study OSPF. In CCB Enterprise, you also study OSPF and also EIGRP, BGP, you know, other dynamic routing protocols. It's a very natural continuation. And you know, in the CCNA, you get a very uh, high-level introduction to network automation, you know, different kinds of tools, uh, software-defined networking like SD-WAN, SD-Access. And then in the CCNP Enterprise, you dig a little deeper into all those topics. So I think if you're looking to get into the field of networking specifically, definitely the CCNP enterprise is the next best step. And then even after that, you can specialize more into like CCNP security or CCNP collaboration. And the decision there, I think there are two ways to make that decision. So the first one is just, what are you interested in? Like mm. think about your future job. What do I yeah. want to do next? Like. Um, do I want to work with firewalls a lot? Um, okay, then I could go for CCNP security or maybe something like Palo Alto or Fortinet, things like that. Or is Wi-Fi interesting to you? Well, then you could go for something like CWNA, um, you know, wireless certifications. Right, right. Or if like data center stuff is interesting, CCNP data center. So that's one option, just what am I interested in? What do I want to do next? Another option is what does my current job require? So if you're in a job that has you using Palo Alto firewalls, well, I think it's a great opportunity to study Palo Alto and get certified. Or if you're in a job that has you using something I know you teach, uh, F5 load balancers, well, then follow Dean's course and get certified in F5. You know, it's a good opportunity. Of course. Of course. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know you'd agree with that one. Um, or if you're using Cisco IP phones, get CCNP collaboration, you know? so. I think those are two options, either by what you're using in your job now, pursue certification in that, or just what are you interested in. And you know, if you're looking to go in a different direction, not necessarily networking, um, that would really depend. Like there are a lot of different skills in IT. You know, cloud is very high in demand. So you could start after the CCNA looking into those entry-level cloud certifications in AWS or Azure, maybe even Google could start looking into those, but you'd also need some extra skills to really excel at cloud. And the major one is definitely Linux. So mm. you can study Linux without getting certified, but there are Linux certs out there you could get, like um, there's Linux Plus from CompTIA, there's oh. LPIC. Yeah, so I'd say after CCNA, uh, just to summarize, if you're looking to get into networking, CCNP Enterprise, and then one of the other CCNPs or another Great option right now is cloud. So you could also branch out into AWS or Azure or something like that. Okay. What do you think about extending your networking knowledge with Python or automation? 
Absolutely. It's still a debate. You know, it's still a debate. Um, I can talk about automation learning with networking all day because there's still a lot of questions. Is it really a good idea? What are the chances that I'm going to work with Python in my day-to-day -day operation? Okay. Am I not wasting time learning Python where it will no, it will not have value in the next year, et cetera? What, what's your take on that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the modern network engineer has to have some level of knowledge in automation. Like it's unavoidable. Um, that might be knowledge in Python or it might be knowledge in different automation Ansible. tools. Ansible, yeah, things like that. Um, but you can't avoid it. Like you have to understand it to some level. Now you don't have to become an expert in coding and like programming. Netflix. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Like just trying to be an expert in networking is going to take a lifetime. Like there's so much to learn in networking. So if you really want to be an expert in networking, focus on that, but also on the side branch out and learn how to automate some tasks, um, use different tools like Ansible, um, get familiar with things like software defined networking and how they automate different aspects of the network. I definitely think yeah. it's a valuable skill that um, really have to learn to some degree as a modern network engineer. And I think I saw this personally, um, job descriptions, most of that time now includes Python knowledge, right? Yeah. Python yeah. network engineer position, Python knowledge, maybe Ansible. If, if you're lucky, everything else, Linux, Python, Ansible, SDN solutions, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's very high in demand. Like, um, it's sort of expected now that you can automate things to some degree. If you have no experience in that, it's definitely worth getting even just a little, like understand the foundations. And then once you get into the job, you can dig a little deeper as necessary. But um, even before you have a job that requires automation, I think it's good to build that foundation, get a basic understanding of writing Python scripts or using a tool like Ansible. Correct. And you know what's interesting? You know, Cisco, as big as they are, as more proprietary um, mm -hmm. in some of their solutions, they're actually leading towards open source. The best example is the DevNet track. They use many open source tools, okay? Python, Ansible. In DevNet track, they also talk about containers, Docker, Kubernetes and bash scripting. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think it's great that they're moving more to an open source view of things. Um, I think the whole industry in general is starting to embrace open source more and more. Like even companies like Microsoft who really fought against it quite a bit in the past, they're mm -hmm. starting to embrace it more and embrace Linux, things like that. So although in some ways Cisco has also pushed more proprietary solutions in their certifications. Like I'm considering going for the CCIE in the near future and, you know, Cisco SD access, SD WAN, you really have to learn those Cisco proprietary solutions in depth for the CCIE, but it's also great that they are embracing things like Linux, Docker, these open source solutions that everyone's starting to use. Um, yeah, it's great to see. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, it was fun speaking with you and discussing many things, your book, CCNA, uh, your YouTube channel, Udemy courses, and uh, your insight on uh, not just CCNA, but many different certifications, Cisco and non-Cisco. Um, now, the acing, this, uh, acing the CCNA book, this is an early access program. Take note, it's not done yet, okay? Um, Jeremy will still need to add a few more topics and, um, uh, yeah, we'll announce when the book is, will be fully released. Yeah. So I'm still working on the book. Like you said, it is in early access, so you can get access to the chapters as I'm writing them and you can give me feedback. You can ask questions. So I think it's a great way to, um, to help me improve the book and also get any of your questions answered as you're studying from the book. And then hopefully... By the end of this year, I'll have the book 100% complete and we can get the real physical book in your hands so you can study from the actual physical copy. But um, it is in early access now and I hope you'll purchase it because I think it's a great program 
for people to get the book before it's actually 100% done? All right. So for those who wants to purchase the book, again, check the link below and use the voucher for additional discount.